Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the United Church of Clinton. I'm Reverend Marilyn Wilcox, pastor of this church. We welcome you to this time together. So we have, as usual, some announcements. Um, I am looking for someone to represent the UCC segment of our church for our annual meeting, which is going to be Saturday, June 17th. Also, there's an event on May 20th. I'm unsure if I'm going to go to that one because that's also the day of our next color and paint event. So today, confirmation at 1 o'clock. Social justice on Tuesday at 7. Servants in faith Thursday at 6. Um, May 7th is our tea party in the afternoon from 1 to 3. Worship planning May 11th at 6.30. Our diaper drive is on, and we will be bringing forth diapers on May 14th, Mother's Day, in honor of all parenting people. And May 21st, it is on our spring cleanup. That will be cleaning up after church and then lunch provided. Uh, I already mentioned May 20th is our next color and paint event. Our spare change this morning will go toward Hero Rat, um, an adoption of a Hero Rat. And um, I'm not sure, are we doing Ukraine today for the plate offering? Yes, so if you'd like to come forth during the first hymn, we will have the offering plate for Ukrainian relief and the plastic bin for hero rats. If you've been thinking about becoming an official member of the United Church of Clinton, please be in touch with me. Um, please keep in our prayers the homebound members, June, Ruth, Edie, Art, and Everett. I want to report that Ruth is now at the Sterling Village Rehab Center. So that's where she's at. And if you're on the stewardship committee, I need your signatures after church for our follow-up stewardship drive letter. So I think I got everything, unless you can think of anything else. Yes, Heather. It goes next week or the 14th? Uh, it on 14th. Heather, can, can I ask a question? Last time we did this, they were really eager for the bigger sizes, four and five, uh, because uh, you know they have a shortage of that. And by death, yeah, Chrissy's nodding her head. Yes. So sizes four and five in particular. What? And six. Okay. So it's the, the higher numbers. Okay. Four, five, six. Thank you, Cal. Any other announcements? Oh, yes. Yes. Um, so this is a sad and a, and a happy at the same time. All right. Kate is returning to us on May the 14th, which is Mother's Day. So uh, it's, it's interesting she comes on the day of the diaper drive, too. <laughs> <laughs> so um, she, everything is well there. Um, she's having a great time trying to have two hands and two children. So, yeah, so she's looking forward to returning. And, of course, then it's sad because then we have to say goodbye to Laura. Oh, but only temporarily because Laura will come and go with us. So last Sunday, May 7th, will be our last Sunday with Laura. So thank you, Laura. For the six weeks is whizzed by. Yes. Don. Very good. And so we hope you all will come and join us and enjoy all of all the goodies that we have. And the other thing is um, with coloring and painting, we also have um, making um, stationery, postcards, quilt marks, and wood um, um, 
product. Okay, to recap, um, some of the recipes they're using for the tea party next week come from the Ladies' Aid uh, cookbook, and you'll be able to sample some goodies from that cookbook, and we pay honor to our kitchen ladies of years gone by. And also for the color and paint, it's more, just, more than just coloring and paint. You can do stationery, postcards, wood products, there's so many choices, so come check it out. Any other announcements? Seeing no other announcements, let us now pause. Let us bring our senses to this time of worship, and we begin with the ringing of the bell and the time for centering. everyone. I want to welcome, welcome you to join me in the call to worship. I do want to warn you that some of the wording um, in the um, call to worship and in the 23rd Psalm, I learned from the King James Bible way back when I was about this tall. So I want you to know if I goof up, just keep going with what it says. <laughs> okay, now join me. God renews my joy, hope, and ability to understand beyond what is blocking my senses. My soul smiles and celebrates the reality that I am not alone. I experience and soak wonder at the paths of righteousness before me. These become so easy to follow, and I acknowledge and sing hallelujah, embracing the one who is there, there even when immediately as it seems far away, distance from my reality. May Christ, our shepherd, guide us and bring us to that place where we can feel safe and secure. Your rod and your guidance and your staff of deliverance, they steady me. Hold me, even hug and comfort me. Surely goodness, grace, compassion, mercy, and love shall follow me all the days of my earthly journey, and I shall dwell in the Creator's house my whole life long. So our first moment of raising our voices together is with number 558, 558 in the chalice. And good morning to our virtual worshipers. The words you will see on the screen. It is, Savior like a shepherd lead us. And before Laura plays it once through to remind us of the melody, just a word, a heads up, to have your singing voices really flex this morning because all of this morning's music is just fantastically joyful. And here we go with, thank you, Laura, Savior like a, <laughs> Savior like a shepherd lead us.
befriend us, be the guardian of our way. Keep thy flock and still defend us, seek us when we go astray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear thy children when we pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus. everyone can join me, we're going to say the prayer of the day. May we open our hearts along with our eyes to the resurrected Jesus during this hour of worship and beyond, that we become new Easter people of today, embracing all colors, nations, and races. May our thoughts of shepherding Jesus bring us to places where we may feel comfort and joy. Thanks be to you for all your embracing spirit that surrounds us at all times. Amen. Amen. And now it is that special time when we will pass the peace of Christ to one another. And we will sing Peace Be With You twice, Feel Free to Wander, followed by the Gloria Patri. And we invite all those are virtual worshipers, whether you're watching the live stream or picking up the recording later, to at this moment hold in your mind's eye all those in your life you wish to pass the peace of Christ to. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. the glory of poetry, everyone. scripture this morning is Psalm 23. And again, if my mind <laughs> breaks in, please forgive me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in the green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with, <clears throat> excuse me, with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. And that ends our reading this morning. Now, if we could stand and join in the Lord's Prayer together. Our
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Please join with me in the prayer for transformation and new life. Let us pray. God of surprises, God of resurrection, God of unity, we are still celebrating Easter, and in our excitement, especially as we begin to emerge from being buried in fears, we can be blind to what is happening around us, and we are still unsure about how to live out the message of resurrection. Give us the courage to fully open ourselves to you and to follow you so that we may become your hands, feet, love, and presence while we walk with you in your world. Amen. With our confession, we are assured of God's grace. Whoever we are, whatever our story, wherever we find ourselves, where, whatever language we speak, whoever our family and loved ones are, God loves us. Praise be to God. So the message for all God's children this morning. For some, hearing voices is troublesome. Sometimes for those, it is literally hearing voices, sometimes clear, sometimes muddled, but always a sign of something going on that should not be. We pray that those people get treatment that they need and are guided by professionals that can help. But today in our John text that deals with shepherding, we are asked to focus on hearing the voice of our religious shepherd, Jesus, one who leads, comforts, and provides the source of daily living. Can we concentrate enough to strive to hear that symbolic voice, one of reason and one of guidance? We are charged this day to be comforted by the sound of his voice, and rely on it in times of confusion and doubt. We are charged this day to follow and allow ourselves to be guided through valleys to pastures of green and nourishment. May it be so for you and for me. Amen. Um. I invite you to stand, everyone, for a new and new piece for us. Number 583, 583 in the hymnal. <clears throat> it's called Lead Me and Guide Me. Um, this we are going to sing with an upbeat tempo. So be, be ready. So first of all, excuse me, I just have to get this. <clears throat> Laura and the ensemble will sing it. And then we will all sing it together twice. So it's very, very, very simple. Lead me, guide me. All right, here we go, Laura. And lead me, guide me along. Oh! 
Again, we have many, many people and situations listed in our bulletin for prayer concerns. Um, we won't go through all of them, but I would ask that when you have some time today that you go in silence and look over this list and lift up prayer for each and every one of these people. And I would ask now that if you have prayer concerns or joys to express them now. Done. Wow. <laughs> All righty. So grandchildren visiting for the school vacation and Abby getting her driver's license. Stay off the sidewalks. Any other concerns, joys? I just want to have say prayers um, to keep the Lipka family in your prayers on the passing of Henry Lipka. Um, I don't know if people here know of the Mason family, Linda and her brother and her elder brother. So um, Silas, known as Tommy, um, has passed away in Colorado. So we'd ask, I think, prayers for the Mason family in Clinton, Linda and her brother. Any others? Virtual people. Yes, we have some virtual requests. Um, we have a request for prayers for Alan Bear. This is our Al. Yes, he was in the hospital. 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 He's home. He's home. Okay, so that's... Um, and also a prayers for Kelly's friend Anne and the birth of a new granddaughter, which is woohoo, a joy. And also for friends and for Francine. Is Francine okay? It's a joy. We're celebrating Francine's joy. Francine is at a graduation party, so we're celebrating. Oh. So her future son-in-law is graduating college today. More joy. More joy for the future son-in-law and for Francine. Um, and there is also, this is, um, this is Michelle, who is on our prayer uh, circle. And Michelle has this challenging um, journey health-wise. Michelle begins a new treatment plan this week, um, which includes an extended time in the hospital. Now, I believe she also has a young family, too, at home. Okay, so four young children. And, okay, so prayers for the entire family and obviously healing prayers for Michelle. Um, uh, let's see. Okay. Oh, I have more. Sorry, I have to click. Yeah. Yes, and that, again, I think prayers for everyone in her com family and community. Um, there is a huge prayer power going on for Michelle at the moment. I believe that's it. Thank you. Yes, Pam. Yes. Confirmation.
Okay, so JJ's prom and prayers for um, a good time and safety getting back and forth. Haley's graduating from Assumption, which is a huge joy. Uh, confirmation is coming up June 4th. That's a celebration and eighth grade graduation soon thereafter. Awesome. So let's go to God in prayer. I found this prayer online written by the Reverend Dr. Wesley Palmer, and I thought it was very appropriate for today where we're concentrating on Jesus as the great shepherd. So let us be in prayer. Great shepherd, I feel like a rebellious sheep. I struggle to stay in the fold and I wonder about everything beyond the walls. I know you have built a place of care to protect me, but my nature wants me to jump out and be free. I long to find the peace that will fill my heart and stop my anxiety and desire from ruling the day. I forget that you are willing to lay down your life to guard all our lives. The peace you offer passes all understanding. May it fill me today. Attune my heart to your voice that I might follow your path to where you are leading me. I know you can lead me to the pasture that can fill my soul and free my heart. Give me your abundant life always. We know Prayer for all these people and situations make a difference. They weigh on our hearts, and we think this morning about the Lifka family, the Mason family, Alan Bear, Francine, Michelle as she faces a challenging journey ahead, Ruth, and we lift up in celebration having grandchildren for school vacation. Abby getting her driver's, driver's license, becoming a new grandmother, graduations ahead and currently today, JJ's prom, Haley graduating from Assumption, confirmation coming up and eighth grade graduation following. For all the concerns and joys, we ask for your favor. With all these matters, we lift up in thought and mind and soul. We pray in the name of our gatekeeper, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the second scripture reading this morning comes from John, the 10th chapter, verses 1 through 10. Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters the gate is, by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name, and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. 
I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. So ends the reading. So for your moment of holy humor this morning, this is something Perry and Don passed along a few weeks ago, and I have been waiting to tell it. And as someone who respects others for what they believe, or in this case don't believe, I apologize to all atheists for telling it, but here it goes. An atheist was walking through the woods, admiring the nature around him. What majestic trees, what powerful rivers, what beautiful animals, he said to himself. As he was walking alongside the river, he heard a rustling in the bushes behind him. He turned to look and suddenly saw a seven-foot grizzly bear charging towards him. He ran up the path as fast as he could. He looked over his shoulder and saw that the bear was gaining on him. He looked over his shoulder again, and now the bear was even closer. In his haste, the man tripped on a root and fell to the ground. He rolled over to pick himself up, but saw that the bear was right on top of him, reaching for him with his left paw and raising his right paw to strike him. At that instant, the atheist cried out, Oh my God! Time stopped. The bear froze. The forest was silent. As a bright light shone upon the man, a voice came out of the sky. You deny my existence for all these years, teach others that I don't exist, and even credit creation to cosmic accident. Do you expect me to help you out of this predicament? Am I to count you as a believer? The atheist looked directly into the light and said, it would be hypocritical of me to suddenly ask you to treat me as a Christian now, but perhaps you could make the bear a Christian. Very well, said the voice. The light went out. The sounds of the forest resumed. And the bear dropped his right paw, brought both paws together, bowed his head, and spoke. The Lord bless this food which I am about to receive from thy bounty through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> That's from Don and Perry. Good one. So let us now go to God in prayer. Oh God, now let us be guided to Jesus, our shepherd, who brings us to all good things and provides comfort and strength along the way. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto you, O God, our rock and redeemer. Amen. I am intrigued by this John passage about Jesus' voice. We are told that the sheep will only follow the voice of Christ and not others who come with disruptive motives. I wonder, do sheep get accustomed to the voice of a shepherd? What do you think? What do you think? I suspect they do. Are there any shepherds out there? No? The questions I asked in my Tuesday pastor's email stand up and continue on to this day. Do we recognize the voice of Jesus? How well do we follow that voice? When we hear the voice of Jesus, we feel 
compelled to listen? Or do we? Can we feel comforted and secure in, our, in following our holy shepherd? How did we answer these questions? We can only imagine what Jesus' voice really sounded like. Yet I imagine all who knew him personally and those who gathered to hear him knew that voice well. What voice in your mind reflects Jesus? Is it a soothing voice? That's what I can imagine, a soothing voice. Yet Jesus' voice could be stern as well as reflected when he overturned tables in the temple. When you hear from your soul the voice of Jesus that you have created, how do you respond? When Jesus serves to lead and encourage us to follow like a shepherd, do we follow? I suspect sometimes we do, and sometimes we don't. And then we also hear these words, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. We are charged to be on guard for those who wish to get into the sheep gate for ill purposes. Jesus, we are told, is the gatekeeper. Others should be considered suspicious. As I said before, the moment of holy humor, we should honor and respect people's choice of those who they follow in their religious practices. I do not believe the statement of being thieves and bandits reflects those people who believe differently. I believe it is a call to follow Jesus and others who profess matters of peace and justice. Other religions do so, yet some do not. We are called to follow religious leaders like Jesus who do. Obviously, if we are here in this church, we follow Jesus and his teachings. We have made the choice to be Christian, and that is a good choice to have made in this sense. Jesus is the gatekeeper and intends to keep us safe and secure in our thinking, in our mindsets. We are instructed to follow Jesus' voice and be led by his grace. We will come in and go out and find pasture because of following the voice of Jesus, that we may have life and have it abundantly. So again, as in my Tuesday email, I will ask again, how well do you follow Jesus' voice? It is a deep question that each person will answer differently. It has to do with morals. It has to do with integrity. It has to do with values. It has to do with ethics. It has to do with religious spirituality. And it has to do with following in ways of peace and justice. Sometimes we miss the mark. I know I have, don't know about you. Sometimes we are in tune with the nature of things that we should and indeed follow the voice of Jesus. May we always listen for our gatekeeper who leads us in ways that are good and kind and just. May it be so for you and for me. Amen. Amen.
Amen. You know the many ways you can give to this church. We've talked about them in many ways. Please remember that you can give online by going to our website and going to the link that says donate. So our invitation to generosity. As Jesus embodied what a good shepherd was, bring us to a moment where we can express the ability to be good shepherds to your people. May we express a sense of generosity that can be extended to your flock in different places of ministry. May our expression of sharing be a sign of our commitment to serve. join me in the prayer of thanksgiving along with these offerings we bring hope that you continue to open our eyes to jesus just as you did for the travelers on the road to emmaus help us to see all of creation the world and all who live in it through your eyes help us to see and act listen and pray Feel and respond to your larger vision of what can be. Help us to grow in you. May our eyes be Easter eyes to recognize Jesus wherever we are, whoever we are, whoever we are with. Amen. And now we will join our voices one last time for number 261, 261 in our hymnals, and Sweet, Sweet Spirit. And we invite our virtual worshipers to sing along from the words on the screen. And it's another joyful one, everyone, and we're going to sing it twice, but Laura will play it once first to remind us. Thank you, Laura. Are we ready to sing everybody else? <clears throat> we'll sing our version and Laura can play her version. Okay, and one. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. Stay. 
God of peace expressed by the great shepherd of the sheep work in you in all that is well pleasing in God's sight through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever amen mm -hmm. 